morning children happy sunday i hope you are ready for sunday school i'm ready let's pray lord jesus we thank you for this wonderful sunday we pray lord that you come and help us as we learn our lesson help us to understand what we are learning so we will be able to tell others about jesus too bless our teacher bless everyone who's going to hear this lesson in jesus name we pray amen guess what i got a bag of chocolate biscuit this morning Woo! do you think i should eat all of them there are so many wow i don't think i should just eat all this by myself i need to share yes i wish you were close by i was going to give you some of them but you know what i've got so many friends today to help me with this lesson this is one of them she's called ruth and i've got another one i've got another one so many of these friends so i'm going to share you take two i can give two to the other one i can give some this one yeah i can't just eat all this by myself because they are so nice and they're so sweet but you know what today i want to tell you something that is sweeter than this and it's called the gospel which means the good news about Jesus, which we are supposed to share with others. Yes, so many people need to know about Jesus, so we need to share the good news with them. Does that remind you our lesson today? Yes, tell the good news. That's our lesson today, and we are going to read from Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. But I'm going to just read verse 26 and 29. Get your Bibles and let's read. Acts chapter 8 verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Hmm. I hope you remember this Philip. This Philip was not uh, one of the disciples. He was actually one of the deacons. One of the deacons who was helping with serving the tables in Acts chapter 6. Do you remember that? So he was a deacon and the Lord spoke to him to go to Gaza. Do you know why he had to go there? Because there was a man from Ethiopia who was reading the word of God from the Old Testament, but he did not understand what he was reading. Let's check on verse 29 what it says. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Do you know what the man said? He said he can't understand. He didn't understand anything of what he was reading. So Philip was supposed to now explain everything that he was reading. He was reading about how Jesus was like a lamb, who was going to be killed for all our sins, but he didn't get it. So he needed someone to tell him about Jesus. The man understood that Jesus had died for him. He could also uh, confess his sins to Jesus. And then he actually got saved in the chariot. Can you imagine? Do you know why we know? Because after that he said to Philip, when he saw some water, he said, I even want to be water baptized. I'm sure you have seen many people who have been water baptized. For those who don't know, we just finished our camp meeting and then we saw many people being water baptized. So that's what this man from Ethiopia was asking. He said, there's water. I have already, he, he just told Jesus, forgive me. 
It doesn't even take time to tell Jesus that you're sorry. And then he was saved and he was water baptized. And this Holy Spirit he took Philip away. Maybe to another place to tell more people about Jesus. Thank God Philip obeyed the voice of the Holy Spirit to talk to this man. It was the Holy Spirit that helped Philip to know that there was a man who was from Ethiopia who needed to know about Jesus. Do you know the Holy Spirit can use you too? It can use me. It can use anybody who wants to be used. Just make sure you are a good girl, you are a good boy, you have confessed your sins and Jesus has saved your soul, Jesus has cleansed your soul and Jesus can give you his spirit. So we too, we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. We need to see what he's telling us in our hearts. If he tells you, oh, tell this friend about Jesus, let's do it. Tell this uncle about Jesus, let's do it. Tell this auntie. You can even tell big people about Jesus. Do you know that? Little children can also tell big people about Jesus. God can use everybody. Everybody needs to know about Jesus. Every person you see needs to know about Jesus. It's urgent. That's the meaning of our memory verse. We should go into all the world, tell every creature, which means it doesn't matter where people come from, come, comes from. Everywhere, every person needs to know about Jesus. Our key statement for our lesson is, I will tell others about Jesus. Are you going to do that? I'm sure you're going to do that because we want to tell all our friends about Jesus. Just like I have shown you so many friends that I have today. This one called Ruth and this other one with long black hair and this other one with a blue dress and this other one with a purple lovely dress. All these are different friends that I have today. I'm sure you have your friends too. Not dollies, but real friends in life. All those friends, they need to know about Jesus. Have you ever thought about it? People that you see when you go for in the park to play, your teachers, have you ever thought about that? The people that you see in the bus, Every person that you see, it doesn't matter how they look like or who they are, who they are, they all need to know about Jesus. Let's spread the news. Let's share the news about Jesus. Jesus says, sometimes you don't need to say much. Just say to your friend, Jesus loves you, you know. Or sometimes all you need to say is come to church. And then when they come, all the pastors and the preachers, they will do the work. All you need to do is come to our church. Follow me on Sunday. Are you going to invite your friends? I know you will. Bring them because I don't know them. I have to invite my own friends too. We all have a part. That's how we will be able to tell the whole world. Because if you tell your friend, your friend will tell their friend, their friend will tell their friend. That's how the message goes and goes and goes to everybody. And everybody will know about Jesus. You know what? For our activity today, I want you to get a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, write down the names of people that you are going to tell about Jesus. Can you do that? If you don't know the spelling or how to write it, ask an adult or someone who can help you, your sister or brother. I'm sure they are ready to help you. So when you write their names down, when you see them next time, tell them about Jesus. That's the activity for all of us this week. For next week, the lesson says, Peter uses God's power, 12D. That's our lesson for, for next week from Acts chapter 9, verse 32 to 42. Have a great week. God bless you. Hello, kids. Welcome to today's answer class. The title of today's lesson is Reaching the Goal. That's lesson 103, Reaching the Goal. To start off today's lesson, I have a video clip I want you guys to watch. Take a look. Set, go. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're it's welcome. So you might see some familiar faces in the video. Did you see how they were running a race? What did you think? You may not have seen clearly who won the race, but I'm sure you saw who ended up with the trophy, right? Did you see how one person wasn't able to finish the race or they looked like they fell down along the way? So these are races that sometimes we can do even at school. We might have sports days or maybe in just in lunchtime, you run with your friends. I want you to see from this how in a physical race there can only be one winner. Did you notice that only one person got the trophy? And that's very similar to our lesson of today. But before we go into that, we're going to read our Bible text, which is from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 8, and Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. But because of our time, we're just going to read 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, and Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. I hope you all have your Bibles. Let's open it and read. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And now let's go to Revelation chapter 3 verse 11. Revelation chapter 3 verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So, can we see from these scriptures how there's a race that we're running? And this is a spiritual race for us as Christians to run. And at the end of it, there is a great reward. Some people may even describe this race as a fight. So as we saw in the, in the passage in 2 Timothy, the passage in verse 7 said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course and have kept the faith. So there are many, many obstacles that we may have to face on this race that we are running as Christians. But by God's grace, we will win and we will still get the crown at the end. In today's lesson, we read about someone called Evan who was running a marathon race. And in this race, you could see that not everyone was a winner. There was only one winner and it wasn't Evan, even though he had tried so hard and done a lot of training. And that just shows that no matter how prepared you can be in a physical race, only one person can win. But all of us as Christians are in a spiritual race and we can all win. Do you know what that means? That means each and every one of us can be a winner can have a crown we can all say like the scripture did that we have fought a good fight we have finished our course and we have kept the faith don't we want to be able to say that what does it mean to win this race how do we do it how can I win this race so let me tell you it's not physical but it's spiritual things we can do to win this race include making sure we pray, making sure we have a relationship with God, making sure we read our Bibles, making sure we obey, and making sure we do everything that God wants us to do. These are the things that we can do to help us win this race. By doing that, we are making ourselves more and more likely to win. If we, however, don't read our Bibles and we rarely pray, and we don't obey and we always commit sins, then we will, not win the, we will not win the race. As Christians, children of God, people who have been saved, we need to make sure that we are doing all of these things. That is what will make us a spiritual winner if we do all these things. There's also a passage that we can read, but we won't read it because of our time. I will just paraphrase it for you. It's the scripture that says we should lay aside every weight and every sin that easily besets us. What does that mean? It means what are the things that you find it very difficult to do? Is it listening to your mum? 
Is it maybe being rude to your friends? Is it telling lies? That might be the sin that easily besets you. But this scripture says that we need to lay all of that aside so that we can win the race and that we should run the race with patience. Why would you need to run the race with patience? Guess what? Because in this race, we do not need to run as fast as we can because we're not racing against other people. You may see other Christians and think, oh, they know how to pray very well. You don't need to compare yourself to other Christians. We need to compare ourselves against the word of God. As long as we are following God's word and being obedient to it, then we can win the race. We don't need to look at what other people are doing, but we need to make sure we are right with God. So this race is more about time. And there's a clock and no, none of us knows when Jesus is coming back to rapture all of us to heaven. And so we don't know the time when this race, when the end is going to come. But however, we do know from the Bible that we are in the last days. And so we should be really watchful and very careful to make sure that we are running this race in a way that we can win. Not comparing ourselves to other people not trying to do physical things to make ourselves look like good Christians, but we need to do the inward work, meaning we need to pray, we need to read our Bible, we need to stay close to God. Those are the things that are going to help us to win this race. Not looking like a good Christian, but truly being a good Christian. The key to running this race is endurance. How do we endure? What does that even mean? I'm sure you see people running marathons and you think, wow, I could never run that long. And yes, maybe we haven't done the necessary training to run a marathon, but to run the spiritual race, the endurance we need is the boldness that we can get from the Holy Spirit and before then the sanctification that we can pray for. These spiritual experiences will help us to be to endure all the all of the hardships that come our way because Christ enables us to do it. We don't do it by our own physical power, but the spirit of God and being close to God gives us faith to believe that I can continue this race despite all the challenges that we may face. Our memory verse for today's lesson is Mark chapter 13, verse 13, which says, He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So that scripture can encourage us that if we can endure, we will be saved. And that doesn't just mean saved here on this earth, but saved and go to heaven to reign and live with Jesus for all eternity. The end of the race is what matters most. So you may fall along the way, just like the person did in that opening video, or perhaps you start the race late. Maybe you didn't start the same time as everybody else, but that doesn't mean you will not win. Because in this race, guess what? Just as in our key statement, we can all win this race. There doesn't need to be one winner. All of us Christians who follow God can win this race. So I hope we take this lesson to heart and understand that there is a race to be run and that we can win, but that we need to run with the faith and endurance to make it to the end. We need to run this race believing that God is helping us and it's not in our physical strength and in the power in in our bodies but it's in the spiritual works that we do that God will help us to endure all the hardship we may face in order to win. The activity for today's lesson is going to be run the race and try your best to try and complete the puzzle. The lesson for next week will be the quarter review. Okay, to round up this lesson, let us now pray that God will help us to keep all we've learned in our hearts and that we will follow him until he comes back so that we can all win and reign with him. In Jesus name, Lord God, we thank you for the lessons of today. We thank you for the primary power lesson. We thank you for the answer lesson. We pray that as you have taught us all these things, that we will take it into our hearts and that we will remember that we will remember all that we need to at the right time so that we won't make bad decisions and that we will do everything we need to to be able to win this race 
Thank you, Jesus, because we believe that you have helped us and we know that throughout this week you will be with us. Please come and take control of our lives. Help us, Lord Jesus. Save all of those of us who aren't saved and make us want to live and reign with you in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Goodbye, children. See you next week. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.